I'm glad that those uh, main frame rails are taken care of because they're pretty long. What is kicking? We are making some headway on this tube thing. Okay, the current status of this project is is right here. Um, so I'm building it around, essentially, I'm building the thing around me. And that also means dialing in where the drivetrain is in relation to the seat. I'm going about it the long way in the beginning. This sucks because basically, I don't wanna do anything in the back until I get the roof line done. I'm not gonna do the roof line until I know where my seat is. I'm not gonna know right where my seat is until I get this in there. So I'm, I'm going about it the hard way first, but it pays off in the end. Yeah, just trying to get stuff where you want it, getting it level. You know, when the motor transmission transfer case weighs a ton, but the chassis weighs like 1.2 pounds right now. So it's hard to, uh, it's hard to dial it in. Everything is very touchy at the moment. Um, but I just got the motor mounts tacked in and uh, a transmission mount tacked in. So uh, I'm actually gonna pull the motor out now and finish welding the motor mounts. Today was a day where you really chew through some tube. Between doing the long A-pillar drip line on both sides and the B-pillar, end of another long day. I wasn't working at the fastest pace I've ever done, but I managed to get a few tubes in there. We got a basic shape going here. You know, there's still plenty of lines left to complete. I, uh, I'm gonna go inside. Pretty dark out. The Lone Star. I am pretty sure that's Pluto. Yep. It's gotta be Pluto. Uh, hey there. An update on these, uh, Rural King coffees. I would not say they're my favorite. But keep them really cold and, I mean, they'll do the job. I mean, it's a good price, I don't know. kicking. This is probably the last tube I'll have to bend until I get to the engine cage. So, we're close. We are close. Hey guys, I got a pro tip for you. Uh, when you buy tubing, it's got like this dark color to it. People call it mill scale. It's also pretty lubed up, rather greasy, which is nice, it keeps it from rusting, uh, but it's not great for welding. So usually I make my copes, I tack on the tube, and then I just use this guy. I go around my notch, you know, and it gets, it gets me down to clean, bare metal. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it'll give you the best results.
Well, there you have it. The chassis is done. And I really need another set of gloves. These were, these were my backups. And uh, they're done. I thought I had another pair in the bottom drawer. I apparently already used them. So I threw out one pair. And then I was like, oh, let me open this up and grab the other new set. And they were not in there. So I had to use these. They're not welding gloves. My hand took a beating. Obviously I built that chassis myself. And I know I've said it before, but uh, that bender is a JD squared model three. It's just a manual bender. And I did not even have anybody help hold a single piece of tube on that. Sometimes it's nice, but it was just all me. And uh, sometimes I needed, a, I needed a tube to be held on the one end while I tack the other. I had to get creative. I'm sure other chassis builders know what I'm talking about there. You have to just do whatever it takes to like hold one end. Uh, you know, not every piece of tube is only like three feet long and easy to hold. You know, sometimes it's really long and you can't even see what the other cope looks like. So yeah, you gotta get creative to make sure all your notches are nice and tight. And then, you know, when you like what you see, you have to tack the one end and you have to get creative on, uh, on the other end. You guys, you know, feel free to build your own. Uh, I do not regret this hobby at all, even though it is pricey. You probably need, you need a good welder. Mine happens to be uh, Lincoln Electric. It's a 255C. Yeah, you know, a good 220 welder. All right, and then start, start cutting, start grinding, start notching. Whatever. Or, or do what I have done in the past and just kind of build up a Cherokee. I still recommend strong axles and uh, reinforcing the unibody, but you can definitely have fun with uh, a one-ton Cherokee, I promise. All right, I'm going. Bye.